Good morning, everyone. In the next section of this chapter, we have already studied two laws of motion: first law of motion and two laws of second law of motion. In this section, we are talking about the third law of motion. There are three laws of motion. In the third law of motion, the third law of motion states that to every action there is an equal and opposite reaction. To every action there is an equal and opposite reaction. And this action and reaction always act upon two different objects. That means there should be a pair of objects. So one will be applying action and return to it. The another will show the reaction. It cannot be applied on one object. Remember it always that it always applicable on two objects. So there should be a pair of action and reaction. Action reaction pair. So the third law of motion is to every action there is an equal and opposite reaction. To every action there is an equal and opposite reaction equal and opposite reaction so suppose if i say that there are two object one and two okay let the force applied by one on two is f12 it is it could be pronounced force applied by first object on second object because action is there so there should be force applied by one object on another object so f 1 2 and force applied by second object on first this is a force applied by first on second this is a force applied by second on one so the force that is action and reaction are equal So I'll place uh, equal sign and opposite. Opposite, so I just place the minus sign. So if I just give a formula for the third law of motion, I can write F one two is equal to minus two uh, uh, F two one. So action and reaction are equal and opposite to each other. Right? Now, certain example. If you fire the gun, the bullet goes forward. It fires forward, whereas you get a jerk back. This is called a recoil velocity of the gun. Similarly, you must have seen how the rocket propels. It expels out some gases and then it propels up. If you take a balloon, if you take a balloon, inflate it and then just lift it. So as you lift it, the air comes out and then it goes forward. So these are certain examples where we can see. Similarly, if you come out from the boat to the shore. If you press the one end of the boat, the boat applies reaction from the other side, and you can easily come out. So these are certain example where we can apply the third law of motion. So third law of motion is to every action there is an equal and opposite reaction, and that can be represented by F12 is equal to minus F21. This is action, this is reaction. Always remember it. Always take a one two object together. There should be a pair of action and reaction. Next is law of conservation of momentum. Law of conservation of momentum. Linear momentum we have already studied. Now this is law of conservation of momentum. That is the linear momentum definitely. So for this we take a condition. Let us assume that we have two objects. Object one and object two with their masses m one and m two are moving on a straight path one after another such that their initial velocities are u one and u two respectively. Two object one and two of masses m one and m two respectively moving on a straight path one after another with their initial velocity u one and u two respectively. Such that one more thing, such that the condition is u1 is greater than u2 because when u1 is greater than u2, so after some time the first object will hit the second object. So there will be a collision between these two objects. So m1 and m2 will hit each other. There will be a collision between these two, which remain last for time t. It remain last for time t. So first object, second object, mass will remain same. Mass is constant. So this collision remain last for t second, and during this collision, first object apply a force that is action on second f one two that we have discussed. 
which is equal and opposite to the force applied by second on one. Force applied by second on one, equal and opposite. So this is according to third law, F one two zero to minus F two one. This is the rule. Now let us assume that after their collision, they both again start moving in the same direction. We can assume for that. So the first object with its mass m one and Second object with its mass m2. Again, they start moving in straight path with their velocities v1 and v2 respectively. So this is the condition: two object, one and two, mass m1 and m2, moving on a straight path such that the uh, initial velocity of first, which is uh, following the second one, is more than the second object. Then they collide after some time. Their collision time will last for time t. During the collision, according to third law. Force applied by one and two is equal to opposite to the force applied by second on one. And after the collision, we are assuming it that they both start moving in the same direction once again with their velocities m one and v one respectively. Now, with this statement, we can write that the initial momentum of first object. So, momentum is linear momentum is product of mass and velocity. So that is m1 u1. Similarly, initial momentum of second object that is m2 u2. M2 u2 the product. Then final momentum of first object m1 u1. Now you must have understood. And similarly, the final momentum of object two is m two v two. See, okay? this is the momentum. Now, change in momentum that we studied already. Change in momentum is p two minus p one. Change in momentum of first object. So its final momentum is m1 v1 and initial momentum is m1 u1. So that is m1 v1 minus m1 u1. And similarly, change in momentum of second object is m2 v2 minus m2 u2. Right? So that is the change. Now, because we know that when they collide, the force applied by first on second and second on one is equal and opposite. So, according to third law, F one two is equal to minus F two one. Action and reaction equal and opposite. Now, this is the force which is applied by one, and this is the force which is applied by second. According to second law, applied force. Is the rate is the directly proportional to the rate of change of momentum. Rate of change of momentum is directly proportional to the applied force. So rate of change of momentum, rate that is the time over here. So the rate of change of momentum of first object will be m1 v1 minus m1 u1. That is change of momentum divided by time is equal and opposite to the force applied by second. So rate of change of momentum of second object. So that is m2. V2 minus M2 U2 upon T. The number is common. Can be cancelled. So M1 V1 minus M1 U1 is equal to minus M2 V2 plus M2 U2. By changing their position, so that both the initial momentum comes on one side and both the final momentum on one side. M1 U1 plus M2 Equal to m1 v1 plus m2 v2. Now m1 v1 plus m2 v2 is equal to m1 v1 plus m2 v2. Now what is this? This is the sum of initial momenta of sum of initial momenta of first and second object and equal to sum of Final momenta of first and second. So, what is the conclusion with this derivation? That sum of initial momenta of two objects 
is equal to the sum of finite momentum of those two object one condition is there there should not be any external force applied so in absence of external force sum of initial momenta before the collision is equal to the sum of final momenta of both object or we can say in absence of any external force for an isolated system its momentum remain conserved this is the law of conservation of momentum